In this video I'll explain how to set the pod droop and how it's related to the ride height and I'll also explain how to adjust it for different track conditions. Uh, ride height and pod droop are uh, related to each other. So I'm just going to show you what ride height I have on this car. In the front I have 3.4 millimeters. Check on both sides. I then measure the ride height in two more spots at the center, uh, right next to the side link. You can see that it's, you can actually barely see it under the camera, but it's 3.6, 3.6 millimeters in this spot here. And then finally I measure it in the very rear spot under the, um, the rear axle and it's 3.6. So those three spots are the ones marked in the setup sheet where we measure the right height. So how do we then set set and measure the pod droop in the rear? So the static right height is 3.6. The pod droop is the droop which you can measure by pulling the center shock out as much as you can. You try to extend it as far as, far as it goes. That's your pod droop. So it's your ride height. It's the value that you'll get with a fully extended shock minus your ride height. That's your pod droop. So it's 3.6. And when I fully extend this, I can slide the ride height gauge in until uh, 4.6. And this means that we'll have one millimeters of pod droop. So what if we want to get more or less pod droop? If we want to reduce the pod droop, we need to shorten the shock. So you can do this easily by just turning the, the spring collar here to shorten the shock. Just tread it into the, into the ball cup. You can then see that the right eye has become lower. It's only 3.2 millimeters now. So this means that we need to add preload on the center spring to raise the car back up. We raise it back up to 3.6. And we try to extend the center shock. And as you can see now, we have a lot less droop. It only reaches four millimeters. This means that we have only 0.4 millimeters of droop in the pod. And to increase pod droop, you then need to lengthen the shock, do it the opposite way, and take out some preload. So Rem remember that when you when you change the length of the shock, you typically have to adjust the preload as well. That's why I said that the ride height and the shock length, the pod droop, those three values are all related and they correlate between each other. So you need to play with it until you get it right. After a while, you'll get you'll get a habit of doing it, and it comes really naturally. But you need to to take into account those three values. And that's it really, it's really simple when when you put it like that. And I can I can show you just for information, this car has the, the number two rear axle eccentric insert. And the rear tire is for 40.5, so it's a really small rear tire. And with that axle insert, I can reach 3.6 millimeters of right height in the rear. That will give you a good idea of how my car is set up. So my recommendation for pod droop is really uh, quite simple. Uh, the lower the grip, the more pod droop you can usually get away with. So uh, on lower grip, when you want to make the car roll more and generate uh, more grip, more steering, especially uh, off throttle, it will help to add pod droop. But on high grip, to generate more stability, especially on power, uh, especially when you use a solid axle in the rear, uh, I prefer to use less pod droop. So for example, between 0.6 and 0.8. And when I talk about more pod droop, it's usually one millimeter or more. So one, 1.2 or 1.4 millimeters of pod droop it's usually within that range. I would avoid using more than that because it will make the car difficult to drive and it will have excessive roll. And the difference between 
on and off power uh, will be simply too big. So that's my recommendation for uh, Podroop.